To find a type of fire is a deceptively simple yet deep way of describing a human being. Our Western ways of seeing ourselves tends to be heavily focused on the mind and thinking. Ever since Descartes said, I think, therefore I am, some 400 or so years ago, we've focused on thinking. He could have said, I feel, therefore I am, or I do, therefore I am, or even I communicate, therefore I am, but he didn't. Mason Dury formulated De Whare Tapafa as a Māori holistic way of understanding people within the medical professions, but it's now used widely, especially in New Zealand. It says that a person is like a house with four walls. When you only have one wall built, it's not very strong at all. But as the second, third and fourth walls are built and connected together, then you end up with a sturdy building that can withstand most storms that come along. And so it is with a person. We have four parts to ourselves that when they're connected together properly, they create a robust person able to withstand most of life's challenges. The first wall is tenana, or the body. We keep our body healthy by taking care of our exercise, diet, sleep, hygiene and where necessary medication. Our body also needs adequate housing, money to buy things, transport to get around. The body is the foundation of life. The earliest life on earth was just a body. Out of the body, mind or hiningaro evolved. So first it was emotions and that gave us the power and the motivation to act. But pure emotion only focuses on the present moment, so we also need thinking. That means that we can look at future possible outcomes and the impact on others. Empathy, take that into account. Early human groups formed communities or whānau, and so we developed social skills and culture. Our Western way of life focuses on being an individual, whereas Te Whare Tapawha says not only that whānau is important, but whānau and relationships in general is an integral part of who we are. We are not separate. And the final part of a person is wairua or spirit. Wairua was explained to me as second water. Our physical body is 70% or more water, but wairua is the essence of who we are flowing through us as a second water. For some, it's going to a church or a temple. For other people, it's being in nature, up in the hills or out to sea. For others, again, it's music or art. Whatever it is, it takes us beyond everyday life, where we can truly be ourselves. Wairua is the glue that holds everything together. Now, I've presented these walls as though they were separate, but they are totally entangled in together. A healthy body creates a healthy mind. Healthy relationships build spirit. Good thinking leads to good decisions about body, relationships, and so forth. If one wall is weak, it drags all the walls down, but if the walls are weak, one wall can lift the others. I've thought a little bit more about Te Whare Tapawha, and I've noticed that the teko teko is a carving of a warrior on top of a meeting house. They usually hold a weapon. Their job is to guard, watching out, on the alert, protecting the people. It's a little bit like our awareness. If we experience our body, mind, relationships and spirits with awareness, we will make better decisions. And the house is always on the earth, and we are beings of the earth. We came from it, and we return to it. We are always connected to the earth and the sky. When you walk into a meeting house, you are walking into the body of an ancestor, the ancestor of that tribe. From a Māori perspective, the ancestors and our past are ever-present within us. We are our ancestors, literally, for good and for bad. We are all the wonderful heritage of past wisdom handed down, but we are also the trauma and hurt of the past kept within our body and being awaiting release. We are so much more than our thoughts. With this integrated, interconnected sense of being, connected in time and space that Te Whare Tapawha gives us that we can use to move beyond violence and abuse to create better and more fulfilling lives for ourselves and for our whānau.